the festive period that we are seeing right now, I think it is quite good uh, uh, broadly. I think we are seeing a good purchasing from the customers across the auto segments. And uh, uh, from the Vahan numbers, which we have, we have been tracking very closely, I think the numbers are seeing very positive. And we are prima facie looking at a, a five, six percent growth over last year's festive period. So I, I think we should be anywhere close to 400,000 cars uh, for this uh, uh, month is what the trend right now is looking like. Uh, for Landmark, uh, uh, we now operate 10 brands across uh, 11 states in the country. Uh, and because our focus is mainly on the premium and luxury car market. And as you know, in the last few years, the Indian consumer has now moved more towards the premium side of uh, uh, the auto buying as well. And that is what we continue to see in this festive period, where the customers who are even coming are preferring to buy the higher end or the fully loaded variants of most of the models which are there. Uh, the festive season we are also seeing because there is an increased availability that uh, has been there by many of the manufacturers. Uh, many manufacturers have also rolled out some customer offers to make it attractive. And at the same time, there is also, as you said, a pent up demand uh, because the planned purchases around this auspicious period are there. So I think all put together, I think we are in for a good uh, 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 Diwali period uh, this year. Now, essentially, because we have seen that the first six months of this festive period for cars especially, we have seen uh, brands like Mahindra doing very well, but the others have been struggling to show growth compared to last year. So they have been showing one to two percent growth while launchers have also been on the premium side, which is somewhere you operate in. Uh, for the brands, the, as you rightly said, you operate 10 brands. For the brands that you work with, uh, how has been the first half of the fiscal year specifically? And what's the current uh, inventory picture, so as to say, for you? Because we have seen inventory has been built up and dealer associations have been complaining about that, that the, the number is currently quite high leading up to the festive season. How is that for the industry, according to you? and for Landmark specifically as well? Yes, I think there has been a lot of, uh, uh, I think, coverage around the high inventory that uh, the industry has been sitting at. I think the last uh, FADA uh, report of last month uh, uh, stated that the days were anywhere between 70 to 75 days inventory which the uh, industry was sitting at. Uh, com coming to Landmark, and this is what we had given in our uh, latest uh, filing as well, we have been able to manage our inventory better. Uh, we are anywhere between 42 to 45 days uh, uh, till last quarter. So we have been able to manage our inventory cycles a little better and to a large extent stay away from the, the stocking which has most of the industry has uh, uh, been going through. Uh, having said that, I think after the festive period that we are seeing, I do think that the, the overall stock levels should come down by a reasonably good amount uh, across the automobile sector. Now, uh, you did mention about you know, the 10 brands that you operate in. So you are present across brands like Mercedes, and now you've added uh, something like m and in, in the foray as well. Kia is coming up as well for you, and MG is another brand that, that you've added yes. over the last 12 to 18 months. Uh, for them specifically, uh, how has been, you know, uh, the customer uh, footfall, so as to say, do you see an increased number of people that are coming in for inquiry for these brands? Because it's also kind of away from the strategy of just being a luxury uh, dealer or retailer in the country. You move to a premium to luxury uh, retailer now. How do you see that change that has happened, firstly, over the last, you know, for the company itself? Uh, it's a big change because you've added, you know, I wouldn't call it mass brands, but premium brands that operate in the SUV segment. So how have you managed to have that change specifically? And what has been the customer response coming in specifically for these premium brands, who has to say? Uh, you are right. I think the last two years for us have been uh, heavy on the expansion side. I think uh, in the last financial year, we added close to 18 to 20 outlets. Uh, in this year, we uh, uh, will add close to 25 outlets, uh, 23 of which are already operational by the end of uh, uh, Q2, uh, mainly for 
the three brands that you mentioned, plus some uh, for our existing brands as well. Uh, so the premiumization trend uh, uh, has been going on, especially since COVID, it has accelerated. I think, and premium is at landmark what we define as generally cars having an average selling price of 11 or 12 lakh rupees uh, before GST. Now, all of these brands that you said on a, on a portfolio basis are catering to that segment, and this is the segment that the customer is also wanting. Uh, 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 if you now see that majority of the Indian market has moved above the seven and a half lakh rupee price point, with more than 40% of the market being upwards of the 10 lakh rupee price point. Uh, and within that, the customers are also choosing the higher end or the top end variants, which are fully loaded. Uh, now, to give you an example, we are seeing that the customers, the age of the customer is actually coming down. Now, uh, uh, for Mercedes-Benz, if I was to give you an example, the average age of an S-Class buyer has come down from, from his mid to late 40s to the late 30s. Now, that shows the aspiration and the willingness of the younger generation to actually show uh, their success and their wealth. Also, uh, continuing with Mercedes-Benz, we are seeing that from all the cars that they sell, 25% of those cars are what they call as the top-end vehicles, which are made up of the Maybachs, the EQS, the electric sedans, uh, the AMG performance vehicles, uh, the S-Class. So 25% of their overall sales comprises of these uh, uh, top-end cars. Now, I just want to, uh, you know, get into this premium segment a little more because, uh, as I mentioned, because, you know, it's a new strategy that you employed a couple of years ago. Now, we did see, in, you know, the quarter four results of the company of FI24 where uh, we see, we saw that, you know, the business was impacted because of limited launches from the existing brands that yes. you operated. And I think it was, a, it was a pivot, so as to say, for you to get into the premium category and you've chosen the brands as essentially as well, which are, you know, because MG as well as m and you mentioned that the Vahan data is very strong for these brands. Uh, was it a tough transition for Landmark to get into these brands? Because now you're addressing an audience which will potentially be buying Mercedes much later in the future, but you're addressing a new crowd which you wouldn't have essentially addressed with the existing brands as well. So yeah. talk us through that specifically of how, how that has come in and uh, how are you addressing this new crowd? Because you mentioned that the, the average age of the buyer is also reduced. Uh, what is different that Landmark is doing to address this crowd? So the, uh, you are right. I think last year we realized that though we had a good a bouquet of brands, uh, we realized that maybe we needed to have a, 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 a wider diversification even further. So uh, we added three high growth brands with Mahindra, and Mahindra MG as well as Kia. Now, uh, which were in the segment we wanted to be and which basis the data were going to be long-term growth stories in India. Uh, so for us, the transition, I would say, was quite natural because even apart from Mercedes, which is the luxury brand, we were catering to the premium segment with our other existing brands like a Volkswagen uh, or a BYD. Uh, uh, to an extent, I would say, Honda or a Jeep. So we had uh, uh, experience in working with the premium uh, brands as well. And these three brands, I would say, were a natural fit. So uh, 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 MG we started last year, Kia and Mahindra we have started uh, relatively recently. And I think we have been able to hit the ground running for the most part. And I think as these brands uh, scale up and mature over the next few quarters, I think we'll see start say, seeing the benefit uh, uh, of these brands to, to our performance. <laughs>